going to present here um, a patient who presented with a challenging uh, type B aortic dissection because he had the combination of severe mesenteric artery and right renal malperfusion. And you can see he presented with abdominal pain, lower extremity numbness, and examination he had diffuse abdominal uh, tenderness, which was, of course, very worrisome um, for uh, bowel ischemia. Uh, he was studied, of course, preoperatively with a CAT scan, and this shows you uh, the source CT images. Uh, it begins just distal to the left subclavian, extends all the way down, look like there's already partial thrombosis. Um, there's an isolated uh, true lumen here, and you can see that the celiac appears to perfuse off the true lumen, whereas both true and false lumina extend down into the SMA, and then subsequent studies will show you uh, that it, the SMA appears to occlude distally. Uh, there's also clearly malperfusion and uh, fairly significant destruction of the right renal artery. Uh, in multiplanar reconstruction images, you can create and get a picture, better picture of how the dissection flap extends down into the superior mesenteric artery. Um, what was worrisome, of course, was it looked like it was occluded uh, way beyond its origin, actually, and we're concerned about how we could potentially uh, get that uh, reopened. Here's uh, just showing this in uh, multiple uh, different um, cinematic rendered images um, that you can see here. We took him to the operating room, um, accessed both groins. Here you can see the Lundquist uh, above the aortic valve. Uh, the pigtail catheter is proximal to the subclavian. This is the um, Gore C tag. Uh, long mark, as you can see, is nicely on the outer wall. Uh, the device was deployed in two phases, partial deployment followed by full deployment. Um, and this was done uh, without difficulty. Uh, we re checked at the proximal end in regards to its positioning uh, to the subclavian. Now, what we're particularly concerned about was the lack of perfusion in severe mesenteric artery. Uh, when we look at the visceral segment uh, in the lateral projection, you see the SMA is actually opened up, at least proximally, um, and there's a, another fenestration. So we opted to cover that fenestration by extending the stent graft down to above the celiac artery. The patient, of course, was protected with the spinal drain. Uh, here you can see the celiac does have a little indentation in it, uh, maybe partly median arcuate ligament syndrome. Because of the concerns with the SMA, we actually looked at this both in an AP and a lateral projection, and the SMA filled nicely, uh, simply with uh, covering those fenestrations, um, and uh, all the distal branches appeared to be uh, perfused. Our attention then turned to the right renal artery, uh, where there was clearly false lumen extending down into it, unsure if it's dynamic or static. Uh, we opted to catheterize the right renal artery. In our experience, catheterizing these vessels uh, in, is actually uh, fairly straightforward. One would think it may be difficult because of the dissection, but it's usually not. Uh, we've changed out for a, a Rosen wire, and now we're uh, deploying a VBX. This was a 6 by 40 millimeter VBX. you got to make sure it projects adequately into the aortic lumen. And then you can see this has um, got a, a really nice result at this, at this point in time. And then we checked the, the entire stent graft. Again, because of the concerns going into this, uh, we have a very low threshold for opening, opening the abdomen. I will say that um, the severe mesenteric artery uh, to a vascular surgeons like left main to cardiologist and cardiac surgeon, uh, you don't get many, many chances to actually uh, make an error in judgment on the severe mesenteric artery. So we have a very low threshold for opening the abdomen. Here you can see uh, the pre and the post-op scans. Um, this post-op scan uh, was several days after the implant, and you can see it's remodeled fairly nicely. There's still uh, there's thrombo more thrombosis in the false lumen, but the SMA is filling well, um, as was uh, the right renal artery. And again, it's showing very nicely. Final study shows the VBX and the right renal and the, and the C tag. So in summary, careful studying of a good preoperative CTA will, is really helpful in guidance. Um, is one of the few situations we did not use intraoperative fusion, but despite that, catheterizing that uh, renal artery in the SMA uh, across the false lumen um, is, is really uh, fairly easy. And uh, the, this is obviously the way to treat patients with uh, malperfusion. Our final comment was really have a very low threshold for either putting a scope inside the patient's abdomen or for actually looking inside the abdomen to make sure there's no evidence of dead bar. Thank you.